What's up, guys? Welcome back to Blockhash Exploring the Blockchain, episode 294. Today, I have a wonderful guest, um, Mattias, the CEO of CoWrite, uh, this fantastic platform that lets fans get more involved, invested into artists and artists, you know, likewise being able to raise funds for their music and carry on with their music career. So much more that we'll learn about that here with Mattias. Um, man, welcome to the show. Appreciate the time. Uh, for you to be here and very excited to learn more about CoWrite. Thank you so much. Appreciate you having me. It's like a pleasure to be here. Absolutely. Um, so, Mattias, before we dive in to CoWrite and really kind of unravel what you guys are doing, tell me a bit more and the audience a bit more about yourself. Um, who are you? What, what did you do before CoWrite? Um, what, what's, your, what's your background? Yeah, well, I think you framed it pretty good uh, describing CoWrite in the beginning. So CoWrite on like the toppest of top levels, it's CoWrite is a service that will let music lovers invest in music and artists they love and get a share mm -hmm. of revenue when the artist then and the music streams on services like Spotify and Apple Music. And like, just imagine the thrill you you were, if you were the one that found like Ed Sheeran on the London street, like 2012, and you managed to put like $10 on his project, and then whatever happened after. So that's God, the could you could you imagine? Oh my yeah, gosh! Been cool. So it's like that's of course the lottery ticket, but but I think it sort of it illustrates the whole concept. I would say because uh, mm -hmm. young artist and producer for that sake, we're trying to help as well. They struggle a lot. Uh, they grind a lot until some of them make it, and we want to enable more of them to make it together with the people that loves them. And myself. Uh, well, I'm probably one of those music lovers, I guess. Uh, I, I also actually, in, in my early age, before my hair went gray, I was also a musician. Uh, I played a lot. Uh, and uh, so I know basically both sides of the table. Uh, but I was fortunate enough to, uh, around like 2008-9, I got a job as the commercial director for Universal Music uh, in Sweden, Scandinavia. And that was this very, very interesting time in the in the space of music and the industry because that was when Spotify was launching and streaming services started to sort of change the entire model. And uh, I was in, responsible for, for the digital part of the business. So uh, my role for a, like a five-year period was basically going around the planet and preaching the streaming model and that, how that would change the, the music scene. So I would say I'm, a, I'm an artist to, to begin with that ended up as a record label director. And then uh, after several years within the label industry and also in the media industry, where I worked close uh, I work with a company called MTG, which is a big Nordic media house. And I was responsible for, for all ventures within the digital space. And we got ourselves into the eSport and the gaming. And through that period, when we invested a lot in like services like DreamHack in Scandinavia, and then potentially, and, and finally, uh, MTG also acquired the ESL, which was a German producer. Uh, we realized, I realized that uh, in that space of gaming, uh, they actually came much longer or like they, they stretched the business model uh, to a larger extent regards to how to work with the fan bases. And I thought that uh, even though streaming was fantastic, services like Spotify and Apple Music and Amazon really didn't take care of that relation between artists and fans, uh, which is kind of a sad story because I, th I thought that could have been a great feature of those services, but it didn't really happen. So uh, instead, like in the gaming industry, when you look at services like Twitch, the whole business model is based on these relations. It's tipping, it's subscription models, and everything is about the relation between the one that performs and the one that watched the performance. So the, that's, the, I would say, my background is coming from the music industry, watching other industries working well in the sort of fan engagement world. And then also, and so CoWrite is the, is the fruit of that, I would say. We really try to solve three fundamental problems that young artists and artists in general, I would say creators in general, are, are facing. Is One is like, how can I find, my, find money to the project? How can I get funding? That is a critical question if you want to succeed. And then next, when you have the money, how shall I promote my music to cut through the noise? Because as you probably heard, it's like 100,000 songs every single day is, is, is uh, delivered and, and sort of uploaded to services like Spotify today. Uh, and when I 
if I find that method to, to promote myself, how can I build a sustainable model? Because maybe the streams are not enough uh, to support my entire sort of uh, yeah, living. I maybe need to sort of connect closer to the fans that actually loves my music and make them invest more into me if it is by buying concert tickets or merchandise or whatever NFTs that come up. I don't know. But these are the three preliminary basic questions that we're trying to solve. And we try to use the audience and the fans out there to, to solve them. So what happens on CoWrite is that the music lover like myself or you uh, could get into the service and you can back and sort of invest in songs you like or believe in. And then we as a service, we also activate you as a backer, uh, just like a digital street teams. We give you missions. And this is where the Web3 and the, the blockchain element comes into the picture. We give you missions. And for every mission you perform, you will get rewarded with our fan power points. And this is a feature that will be launched uh, just shortly uh, and hopefully add another flavor to the investment so we can work actively with the, with the people on the platform. And finally, as your co-write backer community grows, uh, we believe we can help you, uh, yeah, build a better business potential for your career, basically. And this this goes for both smaller artists and uh, and I would say bigger ones. Uh, so yeah, that was a long and lengthy answer on your first question, but this is where we end up uh, and why we end up in co-write. I would say. Yeah, this sounds very uh inclusive for fans like it get, seems like it gets them more involved with the artist and participating versus just being a consumer of the music and then at the same time it doesn't seem like just a straightforward vanilla uh crowdfunding platform for the artist it seems like the artist gets a lot of extra value other than just the funds too like they're getting um distribution they're getting this engagement um potentially all these other perks you know that you guys could include in the future and you're building like a platform that's um, very, very different than what I've seen out there. Um, so how does it work? Like if I'm a fan, um, I, I like music um, and I want to go find the next Ed Sheeran, for example, hopefully, who knows? Maybe I do, maybe I don't. Um, but I have a little bit of money I want to put down and maybe invest it into one of these artists. Do you just, is it an app? Do you just download it or do you go to the website and how does the process work? Yeah. So uh, currently it's a mobile web uh, application. So you can either download it in, uh, in down store or uh, app stores, or you can uh, go to the website, core.com using whatever device you, you might uh, like. And then you just, you log in uh, and you can connect your wallet as well. Uh, and then you browse in the browser uh, and, and in the browse, you will find the sort of, campaigns that we call them up, which is basically the drops that are currently up there. So normally the artist sets up a campaign, they set the funding goal, how much money they want to raise and the period of time, uh, how long the campaign is supposed to be. And then you as a backer get into the service, you listen to the song. If you like it, of course you should back it. And then you can decide to invest from like $10 and upwards, depending on how big the, the product is. Uh, and then you can invest either with crypto uh, or with fiat. It doesn't really matter. We want to we don't want to be exclusive in that sense because uh, we believe that the the whole blockchain technology will enable a lot of more cool features to this uh, this thingy. Yeah. But the sort of pure investment part is as easy to do with normal dollars, if you like. Uh, so we're, you can basically choose. And then when you have invested, uh, you you get a piece of the revenues from this certain song over a period of time. Uh, so you don't buy any like copyright from the artist or anything which is considering the rights. The right to acquire is a revenue share right over a period of time, which could be set differently by the artist. Uh, so that is what's happening right now. And then, then you're in the model uh, and then we will start communicate with you as a service. Uh, so of course, around the release, if this is a new song, we will try to get your help pushing this song at, at release. And then over time, you will celebrate the milestones, basically. When you reach the first 100,000 streams, you will get a notification and we will, we will tell you everything. So you share the success feeling together with the artist. And then you get paid uh, in the same fashion as the artist is getting paid, uh, because normally we distribute the songs as well. So we get the money from Spotify uh, every month. It first, first it takes three months for, for the DSPs or the digital service providers to get the first basically payment out. But then it comes on a regular monthly basis. And what we do, we bring in the money and when we split it then on the backers on the project basis. So you will get paid simultaneously as the artist through the campaign period. 
so that's the way it works right now. And uh, to your point on new features, as I said, what we will launch now, when we had our token launched uh, like just a couple of months ago, uh, and that now enables us to get into what we call like an uh, like engagement model where we, we use the token and these fan part points to get people even more active. So we can uh, we will have missions, easy missions like follow the sport of, uh, artist on Spotify or share this playlist with the artist to more sort of active stuff. It could be like uh, use the song that you backed in a TikTok or uh, even further, further down the line, we can do more creative stuff like if you're an artist, why don't you share your idea of the cover art for your favorite artist for his next release. So we try to bring in the community uh, from different angles to, to get them closer to the artists we work with. Yeah. Tell me more about these fan PowerPoints. So let's say I'm a fan um, and uh, I don't know, let's say one of the integrations is like you said, TikTok. maybe I'm doing a dancing video and I put the song in my video and I, I get a, a PowerPoint, a fan PowerPoint. What um, what can you use them for? What's the incentive? Is it just like a cash back type of deal where you, you get a reward, you can cash it out for like dollars or something, or can you use it on the platform uh, to reinvest maybe into another artist? What are some of the uses? Well, uh, the whole idea, the fan PowerPoint, fan PowerPoint system is like a experience kind of point in a game, if you say so. So mm -hmm. it will be used to sort of rate you as a backer. So the mm -hmm. more fan okay. PowerPoint, the higher sort of, standards you will get you will get in the service and it will be used it could be both platform specific rewards it could be events that we set up online it could be a merchandise coming from co-write that you can use your fan power or it could also be specific specific rewards from the artist it could be like participating in like a special online session it could be even physical ticketing uh, and stuff like that that makes you unique and like give you like a vip position in, in regards to your artist but also we have the co-token which is the financial side of things so uh, the best backers uh, we will sort of reserve pools for the best backers that has the most fan powers and done done stuff so it, it's possible to actually make money on the on the product as well as we go along so that's the principles uh, and but as you said this is very early stage. So uh, to begin with, we just want to find a system that is fun for, for the backer to participate in and uh, give them some respect and some rewards for, for their particip participation. So uh, once again, I don't think you should never consider co-write as the, at, at, not, at least not today. This is not the platform where you sort of invest money to buy your next swimming pool. This is a fun mm -hmm platform where you support right. music you love and you hopefully you find the net uh, the next Ed Sheeran but that's not the main purpose it's the purpose should be it's like fun to engage with music more than just streaming a playlist on a Friday that is like the the key thing right right of course I mean the biggest thing here other than you know being able to potentially you know get lucky and, and find the next Ed Sheeran and get a little money from a hit song um, you're getting to engage directly with an artist and that's you know very much doesn't happen today um, you oh, know, I, I, I agree. Yeah. The, the engagement part is incredible. Um, I'll give you an example. We, we did like, a, like, a, actually I'll give you two examples, which are good. Mm -hmm. we, have, we, we have done around like 400 campaigns so far on the service, uh, small artists and bigger ones. And the biggest so far was with, uh, the Norwegian DJ Alan Walker, which is fairly famous through a bunch of huge hit songs. The, the biggest one is faded with billions of streams on Spotify. So we did a couple of campaigns during the summer and he managed to, in a very short amount of time, bring in like 3,500 backers into the system. Uh, and we did it both through like traditional co-write campaigns, but we also did like an NFT campaign with a collectible NFT where Alan created like three music videos and we shopped the music videos up in like unique segments of 75 different segments and we created NFTs of all of them and spread it out through like specific codes over the internet in the scavenger hunt. And then these fans were able to find them and mint them for, I think, $5 each. Uh, and for that, they got like a six second, second snippet from the video, which was unique for them. Uh, but they also now, when the videos are streamed on YouTube, will share a little piece of the revenues from the YouTube streams. So, and I think all these things are like, we're in like a test phase uh, with all these campaigns right now, where we want to sort of see what is, fun enough what is uh, engaging enough for the fans but in this case uh, alan has 
probably he has uh, over like 100 million followers in different socials. But in this case, now we have 3,500 people that are actually invested in the songs. And for the first song we did uh, called Unity, uh, it only took like three months for the people to get the money back on their uh, investment. And now everyone making some money, even though it's like it's not like hundred thousands of dollars, but it's still a plus and all these guys are happy to support the, the artist going forward. So I think that's a, it's a kind of a good example on how we can work with bigger audiences. Uh, I would say the other thing is like this really young and talented dude called Oscar Stambridge, who's a Swedish singer songwriter. He's only 14 years old uh, and we released his uh, debut EP on the platform. And he managed to do several campaigns uh, which helped him to support his yeah, the whole project basically. And now this summer he was touring uh, both in US and it was in UK and he was uh, on a big festival, the Boardmaster Festival, just before the Kings of Leon. So he basically in a very early stage of his career used his fan base, which has been is very active in that audience to sort of start off his career and kick off. And now he just signed a management deal with uh, uh, a very famous uh, vocal coach in the U.S. called Mama Jan, who is uh, supporting, uh, yeah, Justin Bieber amongst others in his early stages. So I think that's the other perspective: working with you, rough young talent, helping them on their first steps on the road to to the next uh, level. So I think these are, at least, I get proud when I when I see the service works for for these purposes. Yeah, no, those are incredible success stories. Um, also, for the artists, you know, on the artist side of it. What does that distribution pipeline look like? Do they just get pushed out to the uh, popular audio platforms out there like Spotify, Apple Music and whatnot? Or is there um, opportunities for them to get with a, a label if they wanted to at some point and this is a way for them to get noticed? Um, or what, what, what are some existing pipelines there for an artist so they know once they get the money, what can they do with it afterwards? Uh, good question again. So I, I say the distribution today of music is is kind of a commodity. Uh, you, mm -hmm. there's, there's a lot of good distribution services out there. We offer distribution as well, uh, because it's for, especially for smaller artists, it gives us like a better control of the whole flow of money because that for like a security matter, it's a, it's a good thing knowing where, uh, where the money comes from. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we take the song, we do the campaign, and then before we pay out any money to the artist from the campaign, we make sure that we have the master of the song in our systems. And then we distribute to the Apple Music, Spotify, and I think, yeah, all the relevant services out there globally. Uh, and then we are taking care of the, the sort of collecting of the money from these services when it starts to stream as well. So that's the normal flow of co-write. Uh, but we also, if you're a bigger artist, which maybe already have a label or you work with uh, another distributor, we don't really mind. Uh, so we can do the process with the crowdfunding element and the fan engagement anyway. So uh, basically we can work with anybody that holds a piece of master right currently on the song. Uh, it could be a label as well, doing a fan campaign with us uh, just to sort of create fan engagement around the artists that they want to invest in. And I would say, there's a lot of smaller labels out there that always need an extra dollar to sort of invest further ahead in, in the artists that they work with. Uh, your question about labels, of course, this could be a very good way to get noticed. And of course, our ambitions is that we, the co-write platforms should be able to help you along your entire career if you want. But if you want to go another route and sign a great deal with Universal Music or Sony or Warner, uh, nobody's hindering you at all. So we, we basically consider that a success as well. So you're never bound to any long-term agreements on co-write. This is a platform that you should use as an independent artist. Uh, so uh, I think that could, uh, that answer your questions quite a bit. And I think mm -hmm. labels today or anybody that wants to work with artists and help you further on, uh, on the line with things, they're always looking for success cases on your career or things that you already accomplished. It's very, very hard for an artist today, just play guitar and sing well, and then hope that somebody will sign you. Uh, they will always ask you about, so how's your TikTok doing? Or uh, how many followers do you have in whatever kind of, and co-write could be one of these elements that could prove that you actually have the ambition as well. So yeah, I created this great co-write campaign and I managed to raise $10,000 for my first EP. And now I stream 2 million streams and it's going well. So that's why you should sign me. So I think it's it's about showing the world in different perspectives how to, to get, get on with your career. And uh, yeah, 
I think we're fa fairly unique in what we're doing in the sense that we, you can actually get some funding along the way, along the line. That's kind of tough mm -hmm. in the beginning of a product. Yeah, those are definitely some long-standing issues within the music industry, and you know, getting noticed has always been super, super difficult. Even yeah. today with the internet, I mean, it's even more saturated. Um, you know, you can argue it's great that the internet empowers so many artists um, to to do what they do and what they love, but also it's like it creates so much more competition. Um, and it's, it's harder to pick people out and to, for a label to want to sign them or to get noticed because there's so many eyeballs everywhere. Um, but no, it's, it's very, very interesting. I, I think Web3 is going to really help start to solve this. Curious what your thoughts are, how, you know, this new industry with blockchain and crypto, as well as just the overall Web3 version of the internet that's starting to emerge, how that might shape up to be really beneficial for music artists that um you know traditionally have had a hard time getting noticed making money being independent not getting locked into a label not always having control or copy of copyright royalties things like that we've heard so many uh stories with artists that have had problems with that how do you think web3 maybe amplifies um this industry for artists well i think the cool thing is like, I think the utopia of the Web3 is very well fitted with the music industry, I would say. Like it's this community driven company kind of idea. Like if you're a community building something together, everybody should have a piece of it. That's like the whole Web3 idea. Like you own parts of the puzzle when you're building. It's not like a Facebook with one guy on the top earning every single dollar and everybody else just performing in a, in a, in a, community built business everyone if if it is the creator or the backer or whoever contributes should have a piece of the pie in the end and i think mm -hmm. that's the that's the sort of on the utopia level that's what we're trying to embrace here we're like co is supposed to be a community built uh, platform where uh, the artists and the backers and the fans are working together and uh, with our token and all the sort of uh, assets that we potentially provide over the time going forward if everybody gets a piece of it over the time everybody will also be happy in the end if things turns out well so i think that's that's one side of the thing which is more on the sort of strategic long-term level i think a service like this should be built on some kind of decentralization decentralized model uh, the other thing i would say is more on a strict commercial contractual kind of uh, it's a smart way of doing these kind of business it's like if you uh, our next version of co-write will be more nft based so it will open up for more secondary trading uh, of, uh, of campaigns and also open up for other types of creators so we're working pretty close now with a couple of uh, big producers uh, around us uh, so we, we're hoping to also be able to help the producer side of the business uh, that potentially have done super hits in the past that could be really, really interesting for, for artists to get involved with. And we, in that business, we want to create a more peer-to-peer -peer be based uh, model where the, uh, the artist or the producer can strike the deal directly with his fans, with us, like a little bit more in the, in the backseat, so to speak, just creating the smart contract, maybe help with the services like the distribution and the, and the collecting of the money, but then let the smart contracts handle the uh, the, the sort of splits and all these things that uh, that's unique with the blockchain. So we're really trying our best to sort of combine the best of the two worlds, which I think uh, the big thing with the Web2 still is that most people use that technology. And uh, But I, I, I'm, I'm not hesitant that the, the Web3 will grow very, very fast the next few years to come. And we will see features that are not possible to sort of do in the in the web through environment we will definitely build on top of uh, the web three technology so but I, i'm a i'm a believer in in like a combinated approach and i i still think there's a, a bit lack of simplicity in the web three for the big masses to join so i think still from a co-write perspective we need to work both angles which makes it a bit complicated for us but i think it's still important to to be able to onboard artists producers creators but also backers in a larger scale uh, yeah, yeah, it's still a bit early for Web3, but we're, it's emerging rapidly, much yeah, yeah. faster than Web2 did, in my opinion. And we're, I think we're somewhere in, in between right now. We're on the edge of where Web2 is and Web3 being so much more um, interactive and engaging and immersive yeah. um, and having a semantic feel built into it. It's going to change the way we do things, whether it's you know, through AR and VR or 
the metaverse or through using blockchain, um, it, it'll change the full dynamic, which will be really, really fun. Um, is there any geolocation type restriction on using this? Like can American artists use it the same as an artist in India versus an artist in Latin America, or is it for certain, certain regions at the moment? Now, currently, we're, we're global, and we're trying, to be, we're trying to be global from the day one. Then I would say the music industry is a kind of a, yeah, it sets uh, the parameters a bit. Because I would say pop music, at least Western pop music, is normally produced like in the US or uh, the UK or Scandinavia, and then Germany, France to some extent, but like Europe, uh, Europe and US are driving mm -hmm. forces in the in the Western pop music. Then you have other markets in Korea and Japan and China, and all these markets are super interesting, and it becomes more and more global. And uh, we have also seen that the crypto community that we've been managed to sort of engage over the last six months is is also very Asian oriented to some extent. So I think uh, being both in crypto and music, we need to cope with all parts of the planet. Uh, uh, but still, it's. I also think there is a local element to this, which hasn't really, we haven't seen it quite yet because crypto is so new. So it's very, very global in its a lot of parameters. But looking at, for instance, utilities, you mentioned it for the code token. It could be for, let's say you do an NFT collection as a Swedish artist. Of course, you can have global utilities, which could be like, you can join me at my digital release party or you can watch my live streams and stuff like that. But if you want to re get really close, it's probably like local utilities that could add even more value to like a first NFT collection you did. If it is like come to my release party or actually come to my studio and participate in the next creation, things like that, that you can't sort of fly people from Korea to Stockholm to do these things, at least not if you're not a, like a huge artist. So I think we will see both global elements uh, combined with local uh, things coming up uh, as Web3 evolves and you get like a bigger uh, engaged communities, even in local territories. Nice, nice. I know so many um, really good music artists here in uh, Columbia, where I live right now, and they're fantastic. And they're trying to get into Web3 as well. They're trying to figure out some different um, things that they can do to raise funds and, and engage with their audience a bit more. We've even worked with them with the NFTs, trying to create some interesting ways to drop music and drop um, exclusive uh, content or videos. I think this would be really interesting for them as well. So um, I think this could be expanded out to so many different cultures and communities around the world um, where, you know, raising money from your fans is actually really popular, especially in Asia and Japan and Korea. They already do that um, yeah. very successfully. I feel like co-write could fit in very well into some of those uh, types of cultures. Yeah, I think so. I think it's like we need to drive by example here. So I would love to find like some Colombian artists that could sort of lead the, lead the way because we we consider ourselves a platform. We don't we doesn't supposed to be like the you know the advertising label kind of team mm -hmm. that helps you with everything. You need to be a bit independent and need to use the platform for what it is and potentially use other platforms around us as well to sort of create your whole ecosystem around you. But I think we can we can be the player that helps you gather the closest group. Like uh, if, if you're really small, your friends and family, if you're a bit bigger, uh, the people that comes to your release party, and then all of a sudden the release party will be like a concert arena, and then you can have thousands of people. But we're not like a potentially like the Instagram where you have like thousands of followers that just briefly check it, uh, a picture once in a while. We're even more like mm -hmm. the core guys that really supports you and wants to be close to you. And I think these guys are the one that will, for most of the artists out there, that if you want to sort of live and survive on your art, you need to be able to catch that group of people, even if they're spread out globally or if, you, if they're in your close neighborhood. But if you don't have like a thousand people that actually like what you're doing, uh, you will have a hard time to actually make some money on, on your art. So, and that's the, I think that's the, as you mentioned, the competition is fierce among artists on the streaming platforms right now because there is 100,000 songs released every day. So it's like, uh, but if you manage to find the people that actually like your, your thing, uh, they will find you on the streaming services, but they will also find you in other places, uh, which is probably even more important for you over time. Oh, absolutely. Um, to, before we start to wrap this up, what are some things maybe you guys are looking forward to with co-write going into the new year? 
Um, it could be something on your roadmap. It could be a new update or a new feature. It could be related to the uh, fan PowerPoints. Yeah. Um, what's something you're excited about? I would say mainly two things that we're working like crazy for right now. One is to get this fan power engine out there. So that's supposed to be, uh, and now I, my product manager will kill me, but I, I will hopefully get it out before Christmas, uh, at least in an alpha version. So we get it out there. Uh, and that will not only help all new campaigns we're setting up, but also all, all the artists that we have been working with will benefit from this because we will start to activate the songs that we already work with, with this mission and in that we're launching. And the other thing is that we're open up the service now for, for producers and other types of uh, artists, uh, even for labels. Uh, so we're taking away the required, the required distribution. This means that we can work with basically every song on the planet, which uh, I believe will be very exciting. And I hope that we will see, uh, we can present a bunch of really great hit songs on the platform as well. So compared, uh, on one end, you will find the next Ed Sheeran stuff. On the other end, you will find the more established global hits where you can participate in those campaigns as well. So these are two things that will happen that uh, within the next six months. Awesome. Where can people go to learn more about CoWrite and sign up if they want to start participating and using it? Uh, they should just uh, Google CoWrite or go into CoWrite.com uh, and they will also find us on Twitter and, and Telegram and the usual social channels. But CoWrite.com, start there. What about you? Can people find you if they maybe have a question for you in the future on uh, LinkedIn or Twitter or are you on social media? Yeah, yeah. they can use the Twitter uh, or the, yeah, both of them works pretty well. So if they want to connect like business wise, LinkedIn is probably the best. Cool guys, go check out Mattias. If you have any questions, uh, make sure to check out CoWrite and what they're doing for artists and for fans. Um, make sure to like and subscribe to the video and the podcast if you haven't already as well. And Mattias, thank you for taking the time to come on the show today. Really appreciate it. Really good conversation. Uh, very interesting. The direction that music I think is going now and what you guys are doing to fit it and help facilitate that. So congrats and you know, best of luck. Thank you so much. Take care and talk to you soon.